thanks for having me uh, come here tonight, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, young lady that's here is my daughter, youngest daughter involved in the business, uh, Terry. Uh, the first chart you've seen before, the last time I was here, the red on the bottom is, is the amount of water that's pumped in Portage County. Uh, I think it's uh, 12 billion gallons. And if you look on the first one, I don't know if the other ones are, I think it's 484 billion gallons of rainfall that falls in Porch County. Uh, these are uh, numbers that are there in the net. Um, in short, Porch County receives 20 times more water from rain than is pumped. Um, the other thing I want to say about us is that nature of the, of the aquifer allows the aquifer, the aquifer to be filled first with the excess water drained away by streams and rivers. So that's that's the process that happens. The point is, is that that static water flow is full practically all the time. The fluctuations are happening on the transient water that is exiting the system uh, to, uh, uh, through the rivers. That's what feeds the river system. Um, adding to that, uh, now the Little Plover River study was specifically commissioned to model the impacts of high cap well pumping on stream flow and was funded in a large part by the Wisconsin Bureau Industrial Rural Association. We are very interested in that project and uh, trying to find solutions to that problem uh, as part of our citizenship. Uh, the Little Plover River study um, failed, was not commissioned to model the other effects on, 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 uh, that need to be in a study or of this nature, such as agricultural drainage of the headwaters area of the Little Plover River, the urbanization and impervious surfaces, and the afforestation and reforestation that has happened over time, stream vegetation and debris, and the resulting open <coughs> land use, federally <coughs> land cover that will happen if the conclusion that was reached by the so-called Bradbury study, uh, the Little Oak Cove River study, uh, uh, in my mind, didn't consider all the metrics that needed to take place because it wasn't in the commission, he wasn't paid to do that. Uh, and he came up with a conclusion that said the solution was to uh, stop using 15 wells in the immediate area. Uh, I'm just wondering if we could go to the next slide, please. Post number two is the medium rainfall. Is a, I don't know if I can. I don't know. Mm -hmm. My pointer is a cleaning rod for my gun tip. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be innovative. Uh, you can follow. Uh, got the wrong chart up here. Yes, it's supposed to be five. Yes. So this is this is the amount of rainfall that happens. The yellow is irrigated agriculture. That's amount what's called ET or evapotranspiration. That is the only water other than consumptive use such as municipal wells or industrial wells that leaves the system. So when you're looking at this, a lower number is better. You'll find that you'll, you'll receive a back look uh, when I, when, at the conclusion of this, and you'll find these charts in here. These are all factual information that's out there that has not reached the press and our end the discussion. And that's the purpose of me being here tonight is to get those issues in and those metrics under consideration uh, to be done. Uh, they are under consideration and there are facts within DNR, but probably the gem of the issue is uh, at the Little Plover River and other reasons is preventing that from happening. Anyway, DNR, this is DNR's formula that's doing all this. This is, this is studies that have to be done. Uh, the darker yellow is DNR came out with the lighter area that's right here. Lower 
work is better on this. That's the amount of water that leaves the system through evapotranspiration and trans transpiration of the plants. The, the, the extra that you see both on um, the green is on irrigated agriculture. You will notice that its evaporation is larger than irrigated agriculture. You may find that hard to believe, but I'll try to impart that to you tonight. The purple that's on here is, um, I believe it's, um, let's see what's purple, comfort. The city of sports, which is hardwoods. The orange that's on here is pine trees, conifers. And the blue is grassland. You will see in all of these through here, and um, that, and, and this, this chart is in the set book that you're going to get the back book. And you will see that, that uh, irrigated agriculture takes less water out of the system than, than, than the other. I'll get into that a little bit later for you. Um, evapotranspiration is the method used to display, depict the amount of moisture various plant growths use based on their total Lewis, leaf if you could mass speak into the mic. Oh, excuse me. Based on their total leaf mass index. In other words, uh, vegetable crops generally are about uh, two feet in height. Corn is six to eight feet in height. Uh, trees range from 60 to 40 feet, plus all the leaf mass that's there. That's what causes transpiration and evaporation. Pine trees are said not to have much water uh, uh, reach the ground at all due to the nature of leaves. Uh, catch snow and then it melts. Or if you're in the woods, I think all of us go for a pine tree to protect ourselves you know, from getting too wet. The other factor that's in there is that irrigated vegetable crops have a short growing season and their plantings are staggered. And that, I think that's an important thing to understand so you can understand better why these are here. Also, this is on an annual basis. So, uh, and I will show you one that's on a monthly basis as, as we go along. But vegetable crops, peas are planted in May and harvested in June. And you will notice bare fields in June, July, August, depending on crop, as crops are harvested. So that accounts for the fact that they're not really being irrigated at that time or water being used, or they're not using much evapotranspiration and need much water because they're in various stages of growth. Uh, Unirrigated crops have season-long growth periods, longer growth. Corn just got off the ground here in October and November. Uh, and uh, corn, six to eight feet, like I said before, and trees, 40 to 60 feet. Uh, ET is the only water that leaves the immediate area other than consumptive uses, as I said, municipal manufacturing, which is beverages, whether it's bottled water or beer or whatever it is, or, and Del Monte does not. Del Monte puts their water back in the aquifer from which it was taken back after it's treated. Uh, Close to number three. The opposite of evapotranspiration is recharge, and it just basically tips the cart upside down. Same definition by colors. Here again, agri irrigated agriculture puts more water back into more recharge in every one of these. Going here, and these are all the years from 2000 to 2015, I believe, is what this chart covers. So this is the opposite. When you take, when you calculate evaporation, transpiration, then you come up and you get recharge. So, uh, uh, this is the monthly chart, and again the same colors are here, and you will see that um, <coughs> green is irrigated agriculture. Uh, this is what's happening during this. These are January, probably March through December. You will see that it compares very favorably all the way through. Uh, until it gets into July and August. But <coughs> grass, pine trees, hardwoods, and irrigated agriculture <coughs> all, have a, all have a negative. In September, this tails off, and you get back into October, again, irrigated agriculture uh, uh, is an equal or leaves the pack uh, in, in doing that. 
while I'm on this chart, and we hear a lot of talk about the public rights stage in Little Fork River. You cannot set a little public rights a public rights stage when this is caused by a a, 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 a climatic factor, and say you're going to correct it by irrigated agriculture. If you remove the irrigated agriculture. You have to envision what's going to take its place on the land. It's going to be one of these others, and I'll get to that chart, that will replace it. So, um, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot in the book. These are all uh, um, vetted studies that are in the book, and, that, and, and uh, they're all uh, information that's out there. Uh, they are not uh, conjured up information. It's a, it's a, we gathered these issues that are all out there and are with DNR and, and put them in one book so this becomes, these metrics come into the, uh, into the considerations when we deal with this issue. Um, the other thing that, um, that, that all metrics need to be included, that pumping, evapotranspiration, recharge, land coverage, and climate. Those are the metrics that have to be. The Little Clover River study only dealt with, if you pump water, what happens. It didn't deal with what happens when you apply the water back or it falls within 1,300 feet of the point of withdrawal because of, of the most systems in the, in, in the county or in that. The other thing that we hear a lot of talk about, people are irrigating right after rain or that. Uh, like everything else, times change. Uh, initially, when circular irrigations came out, self-propelled, it took about 22, 24 hours for a system to go around, and they weren't very sophisticated or very accurate to get the water out.